Hey, welcome to my channel. My name is Angela and this is Glittering the Coast. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today I'm going to show you how to make this really cute V-Split Halloween tumbler. So if you're interested in learning how I made it, stick around and let's watch. I have this really pretty vinyl from Zindi and I will link them in my description box. So what I've done is the wet method for applying the vinyl. And what that means is I have a glass container with a little bit of Dawn dish soap and water over to the left. You can probably see it. And I put water all over my tumbler. Just, you know, rubbed it on with my hands. Nothing fancy. I submerged, yes I did, the vinyl in the water and I put it on top of the cup. It makes it so much easier to line up your vinyl without having your vinyl stick excessively to your cup. And it helps you just to line it up more better. So if you have a, um, a problem with adding your vinyl to your cups, that is a really good method of doing it. So hopefully you, if you have any questions, um, you know, just comment below, but hopefully that will help you out in the future. So what I'm doing now is I am going to be applying black glitter and gray glitter to this cup. And in order to protect my vinyl, I have lined it with frog tape or a painter's tape. And I have put it on my vinyl where it meets the silver of my cup. And after that, I take about an inch, like I want an inch sec section between each of the glitters and that one you know, the top part of, part of the vinyl. So I am going in with some more frog tape just to get another V for my V split tumbler. You wanna make sure that your tape is on very securely on your tumbler so that whenever you start painting it um, with either whatever, you know, adhesive you want to, um, that it will not seep through and it won't bleed. So I've got some black acrylic paint here and this process, my whole video is like sped up because, you know, doing tumblers takes a long time. So what I've done is I've taped it off and I've got my black paint. I'm going over my first V up at the top with black paint. It's just acrylic paint and I will be going in with some black glitter. The glitter that I'm using today is a chunky glitter and it is by KCC Glitter, it's called Black Magic, and I love it, it is so sparkly and iridescent, it's chunky, it has fine pieces in it, and it's a really good black glitter, so if you're looking for something like that, um, the link is in my description box, so you guys check that out, it's a really pretty color. And I like to pat down all of my chunky glitter, if I had, more um, glitter on this cup, I would probably take parchment paper and, you know, smooth it out that way. But this is a little section, so I just use my finger. And with acrylic paint, it's water-based, so you can just wash it off with soapy water. So I'm removing my tape now, because what I wanna do next is go through and um, add on more acrylic paint underneath that black glitter and I'm going to add my gray glitter. You wanna make sure that you remove your tape before whatever type of um, adhesive you're using dries, because if it dries, it will pull up your paint, it'll pull up your glitter, you're gonna probably have a mess on your hands. So as soon as I was done applying that black glitter, um, that tape came up. So I'm carefully going now with more black acrylic paint and I'm carefully going along the edges of where that black glitter was because I don't want to disturb it. And in this video clip, you will not see me paint the bottom because I thought I was going to do something different, but I painted the rest of the silver part completely black and I glittered it all with my uh, gray glitter. It's going to be super sparkly and super pretty. Multi-dimensional. I love this cup so much. I can't remember the name of this glitter, but this one is from Mr. Nola and it's so pretty. It's a, it's kind of like a fine chunky. I'm not even sure what you would call that, but it's like a fine chunky glitter. It's really, really pretty. My favorite brand of epoxy is called KS Resin. 
This is Liquidy Split UV um, Ultra UV, and it is a SAS set epoxy. I measure by uh, volume and not by weight. It's a two part epoxy, and make sure that you're measuring properly. If your measurements are off, you will have a sticky cup or um, it's just not going to cure properly. And in order to be FDA compliant, it has to have you know the proper measurements and it has to cure for the amount of time that the bottle says. So with this epoxy, it has a 15 minute work time. And two hours after your first coat of epoxy, you can put on your second coat of epoxy and um, it's just a really crystal clear type of epoxy. I love it. So if you wanna save some money and you wanna try out any of the epoxies that are on the website, you can click the link in my description box and it will save you 5%. So I have my little finger caught on, that's what I was showing you just a minute ago, and my honey bottles. Those are really good. So I pour all of my epoxy into my honey bottles and it makes it really easy for me to measure out my epoxy. So with the finger caught, um, also linked in the description box, it keeps my hands clean. I do not want epoxy touching my hands because it will be really sticky and you should not be touching it or breathing it in while it's wet. So until it's fully cured, make sure that you're using really, really good safety protocols. I started putting the epoxy on the vinyl first because I did not want any glitter to accidentally get on to the um, to that part of the cup. And so I just uh, epoxy that whole top part first and then I moved down to my glittered parts. Now before I did this, I actually took this cup outside and I spray painted it with Rust-Oleum clear, uh, let's see, two times clear in a matte I spray painted it so that my glitter would not move. I don't want my glitter moving. Um, if it were just like a solid color glitter, I don't think that I would mind too much. I'd probably just go in and epoxy it. Um, so that's what I do to keep my product from moving too much. So I went in and torched it. It gets rid of all the little micro bubbles and um, sanding it now. I'm going, I, I've had two coats of epoxy on at this point in time. I'm sanding it. After I sand it really well, um, I take it over to the sink and I make sure that I use Dawn dish soap because it uh, can help get all of the oils from your hands off of the cup um, and it keeps the dust off of it. That's one thing we do not want is dust on our tumblers. It will leave tiny little imperfections in our cups and that is not something that I want to have on my cup when I'm giving it to a customer. All right, this is epoxy application number three. So after this one, it, it gets sped up. This is really how long it takes me to do it. It's a very slow process, but if you take your time, it's all worth it in the end. I normally start on the middle of my cup, just go down the cup with my epoxy, and then once I'm done, I go up the cup with the epoxy. This is probably 15 to 20 milliliters of measured epoxy. The first time that I put the epoxy on, I measured out 30 milliliters just in case. I always want to have more than enough than not enough um, epoxy. I'll go in, use my handy dandy torch, torch out the bubbles. Um, torch is better than a heat gun. So if you're one that uses a heat gun, I would recommend buying a torch. The heat gun can move your epoxy and the torch pops the bubbles, if that makes sense. So I don't want my epoxy to move. I just want it, I just want my bubbles to pop. So with my awesome silhouette cutting machine, I went in and I made some lines. I'm not sure how big these lines are, um, but I used a 651 Oracle, or Cal Oracle, I'm not even sure how you say that, vinyl. Um, it's matte, it doesn't matter if it's matte or glossy, once you put your epoxy on, it's gonna get glossy again. So use what you got, 
Don't go out buying extra stuff. I take my X-Acto knife and make sure that the lines are as crisp as possible while I'm doing this part. Because here in just a moment, we're going to spray paint again and make sure that everything is sealed nicely before we move on to adding more epoxy. So just make sure that everything is um, um, as firm on your cup as possible. As you're doing this, cut off the little corners, line it up as good as you can. I think this part actually took me about 10 minutes to do. So I've got, you know, lots of, this, this is a very slow process. So don't get discouraged if you see people making these cups or these intricate designs and they're going super fast. This is sped up by like 500%. This is a really pretty, oh man, I can't even remember what it's called. Maybe tech wrap. I'm not sure. I can link it in my description box. Um, but it's like a glitter pattern type of vinyl. And it's an orange and it matched my cup really well. And instead of adding glitter to my vinyl, I decided I was going to add two different pinstripes to my cup. So I really thought that this orange would be really, really pretty. So I'm just going in, doing some fine detailing on this cup. Cutting off the excess. And after this little part is done, I go outside, spray paint the cup again with the Rust-Oleum two times clear and matte. And now if you have a shiny or a glossy um, two times clear, that's totally fine. Just use what you have. Um, I like the matte because I feel like if I use glossy, if there's dust in the, if I'm outside and there's dust or if I come inside and dust were to settle on the cup, you know, I'm gonna have that imperfection again. Usually with matte, the dust doesn't get uh, drawn to it because it's not glossy and shiny and nice and smooth. It's just kind of like a dull finish. So I definitely recommend using um, the matte finish on your spray paint. So I sprayed it twice. I waited about 30 minutes in between each coat. And um, now back to epoxying. So I think we're on number four now. And this cup actually has five different coats of epoxy on it. Because the layers are so thin with your epoxy, um, I can do this, um, up, I could probably put a couple more coats of epoxy on it if I needed to. Um, but I just make sure that I have really thin layers on this. I make sure that I don't have bubbles. I get eye level with it and then after I torch it, just to make sure that I don't have any imperfections in the cup itself while I'm putting on my epoxy. And, um, you know, make sure you're wearing protection on your hands. Make sure you're wearing your respirator. Those are very important things to do while you are using epoxy. Make sure you get that bottom nice and smooth. We don't want any wobbly cups. Pop your bubbles, stand back, take a look at it. And if you have any questions, put them in the description, in my comment box. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching.